Hi there, welcome back to the YouTube channel. As you can see, I've had a semi-upgrade behind me. Um, it was my birthday, as you know, the other week, and I got bought a green screen. It's not quite wide enough, and I'm not technical enough to work out my camera lens, so excuse this bit you can see up here where it's still showing a bit of the wall and a bit of the window. But anyway, it's one of those days today, and we've been having a bit of fun quite recently on the stream with a deck. Now, this is not a deck I ever expected I would have to build, and it's actually worked out to be quite a lot of fun playing. It's the extent of which we're going to have a stream very soon, or we've had it already by the time you see this, where as many of us as possible are playing variations of the deck with the same commander. So, you're probably wondering what on earth I'm talking about. So, here we go. Let me introduce it to you right now. Here's Roshnak, Hair of Rogan. One red for a 0-1 legendary kobold warrior. And it has Battle Cry. So whenever this creature attacks, each other attacking creature gets plus one, plus nothing till the end of turn. And it also has Heroic. When you cast a spell that targets Roshnak, Hair of Rogan, create a 0-1 red kobold creature token named Kobolds of Kerkeep. Now, Kobolds of Kerkeep are an old card from back in the day. Uh, it's actually a real magic card. It was a zero casting, it was the first time they did a zero casting cost creature. And they turned around and went, this is a red creature enjoy it but it didn't cost any mana to do it it's printed in a red frame like this and it was just the way they did it it was very bizarre for a lot of us players back in the day but also it was, you know brings this card came out invoked a lot of memories so i built this um one of my people on my stream challenged me to build it so i built it up quite happily and then it all went a bit weird because everyone thought it was hilarious so i thought it was worth doing right now a deck take on it. So here's the deck. Sorry, I'm just moving this around so you can see it. There's Rock Shake. So everything is red. I've played an extra couple of unusual cards. So Care Keeps in here. Um, you played a Cobble deck, you need to have Care Keep because you know the Cobbles have got to have somewhere to live. We've got Looming Spires, I've got Cabaretti Courtyard, Master of Theatre. Just evolving Wilds Fable Passage to go and get some mountains out. I've also checked in Dwarven Mines because it gives us another creature. I know it's not a Cobalt, it's a Dwarf. But there's a couple of creatures that aren't Cobalts in the deck. And I'll get round to them shortly. But everything else is there. I've checked in Path of Ancestry because you do have some Cobalts that cost coloured mana. So you might as well get a little scry off it. Um, Ramanat Rubes is in just so we can sack it off and deal some damage. That's all it's there for. Riveter's Outlook goes and finds the mountain, unclaimed territory, we can name a creature, um, probably Cobold or maybe God, but we'll see. And that's what we're doing. So, what are we actually doing with the deck itself? Well, first off, we've got to think about this. We need lots of creatures in play. They're not going to be very good creatures, so we had to go down the creature route a little bit. And But we also want to be able to trigger the heroic, so we get more of the not very good creatures. <laughs> so... As you can see, Crimson Cobolds, Crookshank Cobold, Cobolds of Care Keep. There's the original one I was talking about a minute ago. And I've also checked in Rogren, Son of Rohung, um, just so we can get this going as well. You know, First Strike, Menace, Trample, Partner is mainly there because of the Menace. There's no, there's a, no, I don't think I've put any equipment in this version, but we've got some enchantments we can put in and if we need to put them on rogan we can do but it's another zero costing cost creature now it's quite possible turn one to go roshnak and have four, all four kobolds in play which is quite good fun really so anyway but as i said we need to be triggering the heroic how am i doing that well i'm doing it through creature enchantments so i'm doing auras so we've got wall paint uh we've got crimson wisps or anything that targets our creature let's just say not all auras but I do try and target. The only reason Crash Through is here is because I want an extra way of drawing a card. Crash Through is not great. It could be changed in this deck. But Crowd's Favor, Daring Escape, Dragon Mantle. You get the idea. Kindled Fury. We've got Minion of the Mighty in as well. We haven't got any dragons in the deck apart from one, which I will get to. So occasionally you'll get to put the dragon in. But it's another Menace Cobold that costs one. Otherworldly Outburst, uh, Renegade Tactics, Rush of Adrenaline, anything that costs one that targets a creature is pretty much in the deck in these colours. Um, Spikefield Hazard is here purely as an additional way of having extra lands. As you can see from the top there, I'm only playing 33 lands in the deck. 
and this was a way to cheat it round and get the extra land and we've got another um, double face card as well sticky fingers is good though if we can get sticky fingers on one of our creatures and get in and get some damage dealt it actually works out really well so we do get those treasure tokens that help so bear that in mind storm strike titan strength elective immortality is necessary because we are casting a lot of things but while we're on the subject of casting a lot of things please notice arcane bombardment over here in the corner this is really quite fun it's basically you get to recycle all these nice little spells that we play you know wisps crash through so on and so forth don't escape and you get to do multiple targets at roshnak which means you get multiple cobbles of Kerr keep and it does work believe it or not so but Obviously, we've not got the strongest team in the world. They're not great creatures. I'm not saying they are at all. But we've got some things. So there's Brute Strength. This is one of the key cards. Cavalade of Calamity. Even if you attack with everything, this will trigger. Because if you type, if you do your triggers right, the Battle Cry can come on after all these have triggered. And you've got another couple of creatures in here that do Battle Cry. So you're going to be pinging them a lot for one damage once you get your attacks going in. And it is funny to watch people go, huh? Um, yeah, it's a red deck. One of the other non-cobbled creatures is in here, Dockside Extortionist, but that does work with Cavalcade and Calamity as well. So, you know, you do get some damage on your Dockside for a change instead of just getting loads and loads of treasures. Um, Furious Bellow. And I've also chucked in Bombardment, purely because we do get Wrath occasionally, so sacking your creatures off to ping things is actually quite good fun. More Auroras that we can target with, and Impact Tremors as well, so we can cycle out as we're getting our nice little zero ones come into play. We get to you know, ping everyone for a point of damage. Believe me, these cards do get targeted really quickly by enchantment removal because they do build up quickly. But if they do that, they tend to forget they aren't ready for arcane bombardment. So you know, bear that in mind. Just loads and loads of things. So Cobble Drill Sergeant is here. It gives all our cobbles plus zero, plus one and trample. So you get a whole load of zero, two trampling creatures. But it's still fun. Um, Cobbled Overlord is a really expensive card in real life on mtgo is really cheap so it's worth having a go around and go and try and find one off one of the traders this whole deck tech um currently as i do this even with some of the cards i have got in here tops out at just over 11 tickets 11.23 at the moment now i've done this because i think it's quite a good fun cheap deck so bear that in mind there are a couple of cards i'll talk about at the end um Majoring Bully is quite fun because it gives us some prowess and I couldn't think of anything else and I want another cheap creature. Um, I've got Miss Warhound. I've got a couple of Bestow and a couple of other creatures in here just because they do come off and they do leave us a block of everything that gets killed. Rimrock Light, we had Devil of Dwarf in, but it does count as an incident for the adventure and then having the actual 3-1 um, can't block things quite good fun. Put Rune of Speed in, really for the card draw it provides. Senseless Rage is in here, and that's quite nice. There's a lot of discard decks around at the moment, so you can get to Madness this out. Share Strike, Goblin War Driver, another Battle Cry creature, so that helps us pump up our little Cobalt army we're building. Crashing Door Drawbridge is something one of my followers pointed out to me. It's actually really good because it means once you've got rid of the summoning sickness of Crashing Drawbridge, apart from being a 0-4, which is nice from that point of view, you can give all your kobolds you've created with Roshnak haste and <laughs> you'll be surprised how much damage you can do that way. Howling Mines in just so we can draw some extra cards. I've chucked in Briggy, God of Storytelling. It's up to you which side you play. I've played both sides of it in a game. And it does work out quite nicely. The extra red mana really helps because you can actually chain through a whole load of these one-drop spells over here. On the other side, if you're behind or you've had got problems playing it's Harmveld Hall of Bounty and just chucking away some of the cards, discarding some of the cards you don't want, especially if you've got your Elixir of Immortality in play, really does help you speed the game up as well. So bear that in mind. Chaos Warp is here just to deal with something annoying. Hopefully we don't bring it back. Uh, combat celebrants in because we can exert it and attack again with our cobalt army assuming we have any left dragon grips in uh, galvanic arc gutter snipe because we do cast a lot of instruments and sorceries so we might as well get the damage off and going while we're running them through same with professional face breakers someone pointed this out to me um, whenever one or one more creatures you control deal damage for a player create a treasure token so you now if you're attacking all three of your opponents you get a bit of damage and you get three treasures so on and so forth so i grabbed that and chucked in uncaged fury is quite fun giving the cobalt double strike people don't expect it 
Um, Valakut Awakenings just to make up our land count up to 35. Porky Parrot, I just chucked in for the mutate ability. And, you know, it could be useful to ping, but I'm not convinced by it yet. It's probably going to come out and be replaced with something a little bit more useful. But what that little more useful thing is yet, I haven't decided. Poor Frost comes in. We're making cobbles. We get to deal damage. It's the same idea as Impact Trainers. It's just as annoying in the game. Chain Reaction to control the board a bit. Everquill Phoenix, just so we can go, yeah, okay, we'll have a flyer. That's fine. We'll fly in with one of our cobbles and turn it to a 4-4, four, four, so yeah. Hellrider is in, just to back up our lovely ability to do the Cavaclade of Calamity. That's another way of dealing the damage. Hero of Oxford Ridge is in because it's got Battle Cry. Um, Maniform Hellkite is the only dragon in the deck. So, hence why I was saying we're not really concentrating on the ability of the minion and the mighty to get dragons into play. We have this in because we are casting a lot of instants, you know, a lot of non creature spells. So, we do get some nice little dragons occasionally. Some of those dragons are one dragons. So, they trigger this when they attack, which is lovely. So, bear that in mind. Cosmos Alexia is in as well, just so we can get some life gain and draw a card when need be. The Helm of the Host is in. So I can do multiple copies of the more useful creatures like Hellrider, Hero, Maniform, Hellkite. Uh-oh. Ooh. Sorry for yawning halfway through the video. Or even Porphyros if we need to at some stage. It's a Ferris puzzle box I just put in for a laugh. You know, it's a cobalt deck. It's meant to be sort of like general laugh. But it's actually worked really well because it cycles through your hand and it means you do get some of the other things you need. Cloud Pierces in, just so we can mutate it. It's also a reach creature which helps us defend against some of the inevitable dragon decks we see. Likewise, um, Rona Fire Dance is in as well. So that's come in. So we do cast a lot of instants of sorcery, so we do get to copy creatures, which is quite nice. So from that point of view, I quite enjoy having that here. Coat of Arms is in. We have a lot of cobbles. We must pump it up. Yes, it's a double-sided sword, but hey... Hopefully it'll work for us. Chandra's Incinerator is in at the moment. I am thinking about going and taking this out and putting the dwarf legendary creature in that does the extra damage. So bear that in mind. But at the moment I'm going to play with Chandra's Incinerator. I'll try and remember the name of the legendary dwarf now. I've forgotten. Yeah. Would be good you know, if I was a decent recorder. I would have all this. And I can't spell dwarf today either apparently. Uh... There you go, Torbrand. That's who I'm thinking. I'm thinking about taking Chandra's Incinerator out for Torbrand. There we go. But at the moment, I'll leave the Incinerator in. The trouble is we don't deal that much non-combat damage, but you know, whenever a source you control deals non-combat damage to an opponent, it deals that much damage to a creature. So we do have some. You know, Some of the... You know, Cavaclade isn't combat damage as such, so it does help from that point of view. Anyway, Arcane Bombardment, I have spoken about, and you know why it's there now, and it is fun. I've you know, and people do tend to think it's that good because you only got to play one because you only you know only triggers on your first instant sorcery each turn, but it soon builds up into a mess for them. Likewise, blasphemous act to control the board. That's it. That is the Cobalt deck. That is my um Rishini pair of Rogan Cobalt deck. It's good fun. We've been playing it a lot on stream recently. I've played a couple of games of it. You don't ever feel you're quite behind. Yeah, it's difficult to win. I'm not going to argue that. But you never feel quite behind. So, I hope you enjoyed this deck tech. As you can see, the green screen kind of works when I've got it down here on the side. Thanks for watching it. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Tell me what you think. Tell me what I've missed out. Tell me what else you'd like to see. Because I'm really getting towards the end now of doing all the cards for Dominaria United. Obviously, we've got a new set coming in November. I'll be looking at them as well. But if there's anything you want to see, if it's an old school legend or anything else, please let me know in the link in the the comments down below and i'll hopefully see you all on stream soon cheers bye